morning, we are going to do the calculations of import duty and other fiscal taxes as enjoyed by law. Yes, as I continue saying, nothing customs that is done in a vacuum. It's always passed and out of parliament. So, so the calculation is done for we we'll categorize the calculations into two categories: the one for general goods and the one for used vehicles. For the both general goods and used vehicle, the basis of imposing taxes is the cost insurance and freight (CIF). And to establish or calculate the CIF for general goods, these are the steps to take, and this is what customs officers use to check invoices presented to them. So, cost CIF is the abbreviation. So we start calculating from the very far left. We calculate the cost first, or which is FOB by income terms. Then we don't calculate the insurance. We jump over it and calculate the F, that is the freight. So to calculate the cost or FOB, you should establish the quantity, the unit quantity, and the unit selling price. After the multiplication, you get the total selling price. And if the trade pattern allows certain discounts to be applied you deduct all those allowable discounts then that is only the selling price we've not yet arrived at the cost or fob yet because for every international transaction apart from the selling price you pay to the seller across the counter or through any mode of payment there are other incidental expenses that to make the goods move from the point of collection or selling on board the vessel that is why the c is called f will be free on board so if you give you buy your goods and you pay for it that's not the end you are going to incur some other incidental expenses like inland transportation terminal handling charges storage fees document documentation expenses rent or any Incidental expenses that to allow the goods to be loaded on board the exporting vessel. Good. So when you add this external incidental expenses to the selling price, then now you've arrived at your FOB or cost the C CIF. Don't always forget. But you know, currently our vice president gave directives that we should discount all FOBs by 30%, but me and you know that now it's not in force, so the FOB stands as it is. Then, after establishing the FOB, you move on to establish the freight. Yeah. So, the freight to be very careful, if the freight you have to compute comes with the unit freight times the quantity, the denominator that it goes for, but if the freight was giving some rebate, you have to calculate the percentage of rebate and deduct. But if the freight had some sale charges, you have to calculate it and add. So this, so we are establishing the net freight, you add it to the cost. So you have your cost and freight, which in equal terms is denoted by CFR, not C and F, CFR. Then after that, now we are left to deduce or compute the I in the middle of the insurance. In most cases, if the insurance is provided, evidence of insurance premium is paid and provided, you just add it and then you have your CNI. But remember, all these things are in the foreign currency. But if the importer gives an evidence that the transaction was based on cost and freight, CFR, cost of system where by law to multiply the cost and freight by 0.875%. The product is the insurance which you add to your cost and freight and you arrive at your CIF. But remember still, it's in the foreign currency of the country where you imported the goods from. Then you multiply this by the existing foreign currency exchange rate. And that gives you the C CIF. And see this, because all taxes computed by customs are always collected in cities, but not in the foreign currency from where the goods came from. So that is how to compute CIF for general goods. So I've got an example in your lecture notes. 
look at it and you can practice it as on. Yeah, so these examples are there. Good. Yeah, now we come to for use vehicles. For use vehicles, customs gives customs is enjoyed by law to calculate the CIF from beginning to end. They don't need any evidence of invoice from you. But new vehicles, fine. You give the evidence of purchase by invoice, just like the general goods. But for used vehicles, no customs only needs your bill of lading, highway bill, and then the certificate of ownership from you, then the rest comes to their domain. Because customs have got a procedure under the law. Eh? In the, you go to Act 891, we have sessions 55 through to about section 61 or so. Yeah, that deals with the way used cars can be imported in Ghana, the way they can be valued, and what have you. So that's for used vehicles. So in the procedure for the used vehicles that when you submit your declaration to customs, the officers do the classification, who establish the duty rate basis, then they go to value the goods for you. And they have the database called the first purchase price or the HDV of the used vehicles. The first purchase price or the home delivery value of the used vehicle is just the price at which it was sold in the country of manufacture for the first time. And this is further discounted because of the usage that the, uh, the degree of usage is established by law. And after discounting properly, then the product gives you the cost, the FOB. This one is straight and simple. It's not all general goods that you calculate the selling price, apply the discounts, then you come and calculate all other incidental expenses. No, this one, it is a database, customs will use. Discount the ADV or the first purchase. First, they have to discount it across board, regardless of the age of the vehicle by 10%. That is currently prevailing. That's the vice president's directives since 2017. So you first discount 10%, then the product becomes the new ADV or the first purchase price. Then you go further to discount it by law as enshrined in the 819. And the discount is configured according to the age of the vehicle. And it, they are on your, they are in your notes, but it's verbatim in the law. So I just copied it from the law as if your, these are legal instruments that you cannot change your so when the law says by the time you are importing the vehicle to Ghana it's not more than six months it's still new so don't subject it to any discount at all give it to the evaluation officers as a new vehicle but if this vehicle by the time of our arrival into Ghana is six months but not more than one and a half years you just discount it by 50 percent and you use the 85 percent as your FOB then if it is more than one and a half years but not more than two and a half years you discount it by 30%, and 70% is used as the FOB. When it is more than two and a half years, but not more than five years, you discount it by 40%. And goes on the last chunk or the last segment is if it is more than five years and above, you discount it by 50, 50, 50. The government takes half, the other half is taken off, and that is it. So that's the, that's the way the FOBs are established. Then also here too, the government or custom officers don't do the uh, rely on the evidence of the freight you've paid to them, all like general goods. They have a chart of freight, a chart for freight allocation to the appropriate vehicle, either by the cubic capacity of the engine or by the make of the ve of the vehicle, by its make naturally from the manufacturer's perspective, whether it is for commercial or the body type. So the freight chart is there. You are pick and apply the correct freight that gives you cost and freight. And also, just like general goods, you know, used things are not insured, but customs have to find a way to establish the I for the CIF. So they multiply the cost and freight by 0.875%, and that gives them the CIF. Year two, it should be in CDs, so it is converted at the current rate of exchange, and we get it for CDs. So those and some few examples are in your slides for you to practice. Yes. Now, you see, we have established the basis for taxing importers. And you have length classification. You classify properly and correctly, you establish the rate of duty, which is ad valorem, 
the percentage of the value we've just discussed, then life goes on. But if the government still thinks that they need more revenue, they will not apply the ad valorem when they want to apply specific rate of duty. They give a lump sum pay the fiscal attributes of the cargo, be it weight, literage, or whatever you have. And at the times, they still calculate the ad valorem compared to whichever is highest, then that forms the basis for import duty. And to calculate import duty under fiscal taxes is a long table that are in your folder that I've started example here. Yeah, we have a lot of taxes, over 18 or 19 taxes imposed on one particular item imported. But please note, all these are by law. If you go into the law, they are, by an act, they are all by acts of parliament and even allies. The customs is enjoyed to impose them on the importer he pays and customs accounts to the good people of Ghana through parliament. So how to compute the import duty? The basis are there when you want to compute import tax import duty, it is directly on the CIF, but some of the taxes are not direct on the CIF. They are on loaded value, or we call it tax-inclusive import duty value. That's what we call, well, for instance, import VAT. Yes, it's calculated on about six other elements. So when you want to calculate the import VAT, it's not direct on the CIF. You have to add the CIF to the import duty calculated, add it to the import debt fund, add it to the import NHIL, then add it to the import SR duty. If it's applicable, then you add it to the import COVID recovery levy. You put all these two together, then you multiply the sum total by 12.5% and you get your element for import fat for that particular importation. Then